right, welcome back guys. We're here with another Funded Trader interview. Here we have Dayon. Uh, he just passed a 50K account. Um, so he's now a Funded Trader. For those of you who don't know, us here at the Funded Trader, we are a prompt firm. And if you pass our challenge, we'll provide you capital. Uh, Dayon, I just want to start. Uh, where do you, where are you located? So I'm located in London. I'm originally from Jamaica, but I live in the UK, London. Oh, nice. And uh, how did you start out in Forex? And what do you wish you did differently? Um, so I started out kind of moving around through um, some, some academies that weren't really into trading. Um, they said they were, but they weren't really into trading. And then I ended up um, on YouTube. I was looking up FTMO videos because I didn't know what the hell FTMO was. And um, I found a video by Blake, which is my mentor from VVS, along with Augusto, and ended up joining that academy. And I've been there ever since. Um, that's how I kind of got into trading. So I, I you could kind of say I was lucky. It was my second ever academy that I joined. So kind of called me lucky. Oh, wow. It's pretty awesome that you found Blake right away. I know yeah, a lot right of guys, away, man. Yeah, like six weeks in. Oh, six weeks in. Wow. Six weeks in, yeah. It took uh, me six weeks awesome. to find a good academy. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And uh, what motivated you to become a funded trader with a prop firm instead of just trading your own account? I mean, every time I'd put money in a trading account, it just never seemed like enough money for me to take seriously. And I'd always blow the accounts. So that was my main reason for getting into prop firms. Okay, I can understand that. And have you ever traded with another prop firm before? No, this is my first. First one. Nice. Yeah. Uh, have you ever managed anyone's account ever? No. No, you've never managed someone's account? Gotcha. And how many times have you blown an account? Ooh, I, I can't count, man. I'll say a dozen times. Um, prop challenges as well, included. Oh, yeah. Yeah, loads. And mainly because of, mainly because of psychology, I would say. Mm, what what do you say your, your biggest barrier with psychology was? Patience. Number one, patience. That's what it was. Just couldn't wait for the setup to show up. Just kind of force it. Every time you go in the market, you're you're there for half an hour and you, you need to trade within that half an hour, especially when you've got a nine to five job. You're trying to you're trying to maximize profits in the time that you can trade. And that's just not how it works. You just have to wait for the setups to play out. Gotcha. So for our viewers at home, what would you tell them to, you know, exercise that patience and not try and force trades? Yeah, you have to. So whenever you try to force a trade, it's just, it's just never going to work out. The market doesn't work that way. You need to you need to find places in the market based on your plan and your strategy that you're going to trade. And then only then you can take actual high probability trades. But if you go into the market and you try and sell or buy from anywhere, you're going to end up like me back in the day, just blowing 12 accounts. I mean, I've tried it 12 times and it didn't work. I mean, that's probably enough time to try something before you give up. Oh, yeah. I know that story too well. Yeah. And uh, what are your favorite pairs to trade? Um, at the moment, I would say EURUSD. EURUSD? That's, that's my main pair that I trade. But I do dabble in a, in, in, in a few other pairs, but I do try to test them out first before. Any particular reason for concentrating on EURUSD? Um, tight spreads, mainly. Liquidity, mm -hmm. volatility. Um, the structure is just really clean because I trade smart money. So okay. my strategy depends upon structure being really clean gotcha and uh do you trade like any commodities any indices crypto anything like um, that? um looking into us 30 at the moment but only testing it out so far gotcha and with you being a smart money trader you know you guys are notorious for high rr but not having too good of a, a strike rate so what helps you deal with the losses and how do you come back stronger from them Okay, so for me, I see trading as purely psychological. I look at trading completely different from a lot of people would. So I actually don't trade to win trades. I actually trade to get the sample size, right? So I'm big on psychology, right? And every, everyone in the academy knows this because I do teach in Vivius Academy now. So the way I see it, I, 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 do, I do like some maths and I'll put it down in like my notes or something. And I go for a fixed RR. I don't take partials. I don't close early. And it's either going to be break even because I don't trail my stop either. So it's either a break even, a win, or a loss. And I do sample size of 20 trades, right? And it's always a fixed RR. And my minimum RR at the moment is 10, 
which means if I take 20 trades, I only need to win two trades to make two R profit at the end of the month, right? And obviously um, with my strategy, I'm going to win way more than two trades, right? So that kind of keeps my mindset in a place where I know that I can, I can afford these losses because by the time I take, I don't know, maybe if I take six losses in a row, that's my worst losing streak mm -hmm. since I've started trading. If I take six losses in a row, the next trade I win, I'll still be up 4R because I've made 10R and I've lost six, right? So that's kind of how I deal with my, my losses on a day-to-day -day basis. I kind of just see trading as not getting on there to win, but getting on the charts to take a trade that fits your plan. So every trade that fits my plan is a win for me because once you've followed your plan, there's nothing else you can really do. You just have to let the market do its thing. Right, because we're not in control of the market. So we just have to follow it the best we can. And then whatever happens is the result. You know what I mean? So that's how I kind of look at losses. And it's worked for me and my students. So definitely, definitely. recommend it. So you, you've established a systematic process and you simply- Very follow, systematic. Yeah. You follow your very, systematic process regardless. Very mechanical as well. Amazing. And uh, how will you manage your funded account to keep it? I mean, I would start off with a small risk. And I'll, I'll, I'll basically just do the same thing. So, I mean, I'm taking trades in 20 sample sizes, right? Which means whatever my overall drawdown is, I need to be able to survive 20 losses mm -hmm. if that was ever to be the case, which is very unlikely. But you do need to plan for the worst case scenario. So I would say, what I like to say is take your, take your worst losing streak, right? That you've ever had mm -hmm. and times it by three. And then take that number and divide into your overall drawdown. And that will give you the amount that you need to risk. Meaning that if you ever end up three times worse than you've ever been, you'll still be in the game, as I like to put it. So that's, that's the way I would kind of expect to do it. So I'll start off with a small risk is a short answer. Don't you? I really like that approach. It's very, very mechanical, very systematic, very mathematical. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And are you planning on going for the scaling plan? Oh, most definitely, yeah. Gotcha. And uh, what are you planning to do with uh, the future withdrawals? Um, I do plan to leave a buffer, to be honest, or maybe a 5 or 10% buffer, because then I can scale up my risk. Because then, like I said, that number that I divide my risk into, right, I can then, it's now, it's now going to be a lot more risk, yeah, per trade, if I leave, like, let's say a 10% buffer, then I've got, 22% uh, overall drawdown. And then obviously once I divide that, it's going to be a bigger risk per trade. So that's that's my plan for the future, just growing the account. Gotcha. And every time I withdraw, I plan to leave leave a buffer so I can grow the account and take on some more accounts as gotcha. well. So, yeah. And fantastic. would you say that you're a swing trader, intraday, scalper? Um, Scalper, intraday. Scalper, intraday. Mainly scalper though. So I have a follow-up question for that. So being a scalper intraday trader and then limiting yourself to 20 trades for the month, what happens if there's a 21st trading opportunity or a 22nd trading opportunity? How do I you start new, so? I start a new sample size. So the month doesn't have to end on the 30th or the 28th. It's, 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 it's rolling, right? Do you get it? So it's a rolling okay. 20 trade month. So it doesn't have to be the month that I get the withdrawal. It can start anytime. So the 21st trade, is literally the first trade oh, as I we see. start over once we re once we get to 20 and then i judge my performance based on those 20 trades and i also journal every trade so then i'll go back i'll look at them and i'll take out what what, what doesn't work and then i'll try to implement what works most of the time and i just make slight tweaks but that's over time i i i, I typically need to see about five sample sizes so that's 100 trades to really make me change something. If something really stands out that it's not working or it's working, I don't know, 10% of the time, mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll try and take that out. So it's just all rule-based. And what time frame would you say you're mostly trading on or looking at rather? Um, 15 minute and the one minute. 15 I mean, minute one I, minute. I hardly go any higher than that because there's just no need to. I've, in the past, I used to go higher than that. I used to go monthly, daily, weekly, top-down analysis, the whole chart. But then I started to realize if I'm scalping and I'm trading within a 15 minute range, nothing above the 15 minute really matters to me. So I've started to remove things as I go along. 
So when I first started out, my trading plan was like this big. Now it's like this, right? It's I just use what works. Gotcha. I mean, that's the best thing you can do. Yeah, simplicity. Now, uh, do you use any fundamentals in your analysis at all, or is mostly technical analysis and price action? Yeah, 99% technical analysis. Um, the only fundamentals I would say, I don't trade the news. Don't trade the news, gotcha. Yeah. Any reason in particular? Um, I just don't like um, the risk of slippage, really. It's happened to me before. Gotcha. So, yeah. Now, have you ever found yourself long and short the same pair at the same time? No. No? Never. Will, do you ever uh, trade against market structure? Never. Never? Mm -mm. Gotcha. And uh, do you make use of any EAs for risk management or? Uh, yeah, so, so I do use Magic Keys. Um, it's a risk management EA. Uh, can um, you tell me a little bit more about that? So Magic Keys is, is a risk management EA. So you've, instead, of, instead of you typing in the numbers on MT4, you can just move lines around for your entry, your stop loss and your take profit. And it kind of does all the working out for you in terms of the lot sizes and the RR and how much you're gonna make from that winning trade, how much you'd lose. And you can sort of just move everything around in the chart instead of typing in those, I mean, six or eight digit numbers. It's just, it's just a lot faster to do it um, as, as, as compared to trading on your phone or something. Um, it's a shame we can't do it on the Fundy Trader at the moment, but I hope we can. They'll allow us to do it pretty soon. Gotcha. And uh, I guess we should uh, take a look on the charts and maybe you can give us a quick insight into your strategy. Okay, man, no problem. I look at, let's look at um, a Euro AUD trade I took today. So the way I'd approach a chart, I don't know if you can see this, but um, I've only got the one minute, the 15 minute and the four hour, right? So the four hour is my highest time frame that I would go to. And that's just so I can see where the higher time frame narrative of the market is coming from. So the only piece of information I need to see on the four hour is, are we in a pullback or a continuation? For now, the last break of structure we had was to the upside. So for me, we're in a pullback, which means I can comfortably trade until we get into these levels. When we get into these levels, I will still be trading this downtrend until it breaks to the upside on the 15 minutes. So at the moment, this is what I was looking at today. So starting off, we had, let me kind of grab this out of the way. So we kind of had this sort of structure playing out. And I could see, so I, like I said, I've got rules for everything. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but um, I've got rules for my pullbacks as well. There's a certain amount of pips I want to see for a pullback, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. again, I only trade pro trend and I only sell from the discount. Sorry, I only sell from the premium or buy from the discount. So um, as you can see, this area, it's not exactly in the premium, but it does tap into the premium. And that's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. So I'll typically mark these two levels out. As you can see, I've got an alarm on this one. I did have, alarm on th I did have an alarm on this one as well. And then if we go to the one minute, I want to see a one minute confirmation, right? And all I want to see is I want to see the one minute time frame that's in an uptrend. I want to see that uptrend turn into a downtrend, right? And for that, you need a break of structure or change of character to the downside, right? And then this high becomes liquidity, right? And then I'd want to see that pullback to get in, right? That's our return to origin, trade the market down. So if I play this forward, you're going to see exactly what happens here, right? So we have, we have an uptrend, right? And if, we, if I mark this out, you can see we've got this uptrend. Right. And then the first sign that we were going to turn around was this one when we had a break of this low, because this low created this high. And for me, if this low breaks and that's, that's a sign of the trend turning around. Right. And as we can see, as soon as we did that, we had a pullback into this area. And this is where, this is where I had my limit set. Right. Mm -hmm. Target first target would obviously be down here. But you see, the thing is, the reason I had my target down here is because by looking at the four hour, right, I can expect the market to push lower into this area. I don't see any reason for price to reverse from here, especially we can see all these liquidity gaps as well. So that's just like a clear road for me. It's like being on the open road in a nice car. <laughs> so <laughs> I would just always push the envelope on this because I only want a minimum of one to 10 from this trade. 
So I'll literally target down here, right? And I'll just let that play. And from this point, I wouldn't watch this trade. I'll just let it do its thing. I wouldn't move to break even. I wouldn't trail my stop. Wouldn't take partials. I wouldn't do everything, anything at all, right? I mean, even if this trade went to 9.5 RRs and it returned on me, I, to be honest, I really wouldn't care because I know at the end of the month, right, going after these trades, there's a highly likelihood, there's a, there's a, there's a likelihood I'm going to catch quite a few of these trades yeah. for the month. And that's all I need. I only need about three of these trades to guarantee myself 13 hours for the month because I've already done the maps and I know that the probabilities are on my side, right? So mm -hmm. that's pretty much all I need. And as you can see, still in this trade, it's not over yet. But again, I'm not trying to predict what the market's going to do. I'm only trying to follow the market based on what the market's showing me. Gotcha. So that's, that's the main thing when it comes to my strategy. I never, ever try to predict the market. I'll mark these levels up. I'll wait for price to get there and I'll let the market show me its hand first as if we're playing poker, right? And then I'll just react based on what the market's doing. So let's say, for example, if price came, came into this area on the 15 minute, I wouldn't just automatically expect price to turn around because we're in a four hour area that could continue the four hour trend. I would first want to see a break of structure to the upside on the 15 minute. And once this happens, it tells me that we are now bullish because we've had a break of structure to the upside, right? Same rule as I'd follow on the one minute when I was looking for that confirmation. So I'm looking for that same confirmation in here, but on a higher time frame. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Gotcha. And I see that you're using uh, some pretty small stop losses. Those are pretty tight. What do you say? Those are like two or three pips? I mean, this is big. This is 3.8. With Euro USD, I could get a much smaller stop loss, but because this is Euro AUD, this, the spreads are a bit larger. So I've had to kind of cover the high quite a bit by about 1.6, 1.7 pips just to account for the spread. But typically in Euro USD, I go for two to three pip stop loss maximum. Jeez. Now, if by any chance you end up getting taken out by spread or slippage or you're not getting the direct price that you need, um, are you the type of trader that'll go in for a re-entry? Oh yeah, definitely. So yeah. I've got a rule where I'd go, I'll, I'll take three chances within my point of interest. So let's say I got taken out here, right? And then it went down, broke another piece of structure. Let's say it was spread that took me out. I would literally jump back in when price retests. If it wasn't spread and it just took me out naturally and gave another confirmation, I'd jump in again. And if it took me out again and remained in this point of interest, I'll jump in again. After three goals, I'll probably give up. Gotcha. And right. I know a lot of traders, uh, they'll stick to a certain, uh, a fixed percentage of their account. They'll risk per trade, right? So yeah. given the example that you would risk 1% per trade, I'm not saying that you are, but given yeah. the example that you are, um, knowing that you would possibly take uh, three potential entries for one single trade idea, would you split your risk throughout those three or would you just take the standard percentage for each trade no. yeah so for me i'd always do the standard risk standard right? risk. i'd always do the standard risk because then that that puts me into the spectrum of my probabilities and the maths that i've already done right before even taking the trade before even getting onto the charts so if i cut my wrist and it kind of messes up my probabilities and like you said in your example um one percent for me personally I haven't seen I haven't seen a 10 trade losing streak in my trading. So not saying I wouldn't expect one, but if I did get one, well, hey, that's how it goes. But I'm not expecting a 10, a 10 loss streak, even though I don't risk 1% anyway. It's, it's lower than that. But even, even if that was the case, I wouldn't expect to lose 10 trades. And again, because I'm going for a 1 to 10, even if I got to a scenario where I lost, again, like my worst losing streak, six, even if I got to six and I won just one trade, then I'd be back to, to plus four. So that kind of puts me in the mindset where I can just afford these losses, right? Sometimes people see it and they say, hmm, I don't like the way you trade because you kind of just leave trades to run. And if it goes a certain amount, you wouldn't take partials. But for me, when you take a trade and you take partials, by the time you get to the end of the trade, if you've gone for one to 10, by the time you've taken partials, you've probably got one to four. I mean, why put yourself through all that stress and wait for price to go all the way down here how many hours when you could have literally taken a hard TP at one to four, that would have made more sense. And 
getting trades to go one to four would be a lot easier as well, which means you could probably take more trades and you could get to your TP a lot earlier and not having to wait for all this to happen and take half percent, half a percent, half a percent. Personally, I just don't see the point in scalping. Definitely as a swing trader or an intraday trader, I do see the point. Mm -hmm. But for scalping, I don't see the point of taking partials. Gotcha. That's it's just my opinion. Makes sense. So you you take the the approach of you know I'm taking this trade for a reason. I'm gonna hold yeah. it to my TP no matter what because oh, I have yeah. conviction in it. Yeah, yeah. Because if I start taking one to eights, one to seven, one to sixes, then all the maths that I've done um, before that beforehand it's not going to make any sense if i'm taking some one to fours some one to sixes some one to three some one to twos because remember, put it this way your loss is always going to be minus one minus one rr mm -hmm. i've never seen someone take partials out of a loss so i don't i don't plan on taking partials out of a winning trade right because for me for my psychology anyways i would feel i'd feel upset if i had a trade going one to ten and i got to one to five and i took fifty percent then mm -hmm. I got to one to 10, I'd feel like, oh man, I could have had so much more profit, but I decided to take partials. Why? It's all psychological, right? The reason I'm taking partials is because I'm trading from a mindset of fear or I don't trust my analysis. I don't think the trade's going to work, right? Or I do think the trade's going to work. And as soon as you take your mindset away from taking the trade because you think it's going to win, then trading becomes a lot, a lot easier. Right. And a lot less stressful because it doesn't need to be stressful. Right. I mean, who would want to get into an industry where you're constantly stressed every day? Not me. So I had I had to go on a long journey with my psychology because my psychology was the worst. I used to take one trade for the week. It would be a loss and I wouldn't trade for like 10 days. Right. And I had to say to myself, well, this is not sustainable, is it? So I knew that I wanted to do trading. And if it was going to be something that was going to have me in a depressing state all the time i just didn't want to i just didn't want to do it so i decided that oh you know what i'm going to work on my psychology and i'm going to see if i can do trading in a way where i don't have to get my emotions involved because obviously at the end of the day you've got your family you've got your friends you've got everything else you don't want to always be that depressed person because you've lost some trades today mm -hmm. and that was my main reason of going down such a rabbit hole when it comes to psychology so in the mentorship as well, in VVS, that's one of the main things I teach. I'm known for psychology. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I'd like, to, I'd like to shout out my YouTube channel as well. It's Bricklayer FX and my Instagram, Bricklayer FX again. Of course. And we'll put those down in the description as well. Thank you, man. Cheers. Cheers. All right. That wraps up our interview. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you again for coming on and look forward to uh, maybe doing this again in the future. Hopefully. Thank you. After my first payout. Of course. All right. Yeah. Take it easy. All right. Take it easy, man.